What's the worst that could happen? I've always wondered if Belgian beers, they've always got kind of like a banana clove, you know? And I wonder, is that because they put banana and cloves in it? Or is that a characteristic of the Belgian hops that they use? That's a good question. <laughs> we are live. Nice. So we shouldn't talk about Belgian beer. Then. Is that... <laughs> So if if you don't mind, uh, can you go to YouTube to my YouTube channel? Yeah. And then um, if you can mute it so that it's not feeding back, but then you, right. you can um, you can uh, if people are you know active in the comments. All right, I am on your channel right now. A little bit of a delay, but yeah, that's, that's probably normal. Life. The only way to really view it in real time is from like the actual stream, streaming site right here in front of me, but I obviously can't sit in front of the computer. So, thank you guys for confirming that we are live, Boxelator and uh, Ignacio. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I just needed to get the link so I could tweet it out. Hey, everybody. How long you got that drawing table, dude? A long time. Since I moved in here. Yeah. It's a battlefield. I love it. <laughs> yes, it's like a, it's kind of like Jackson Pollock in there. I feel like. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, I'm moving my way over. Tyrell, am I getting louder? As, as... Yeah, a little bit. You still sound good, though. Cool. Let us know if Dan's too loud, guys. All Thanks. right. Let's see my hand. All right, sweet. Oh, now you sound smooth and buttery. Yeah, dude, that's, the way it's, that's the way it is. I got this new... I have a new mic stand just to the left of me. Um, I feel like I'm on NPR right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today uh, for Friday with D-Dubs, we're just hanging out a little bit, and I'm going to do like kind of a promotional pin-up thing for Tyrell's new book with Aubrey Sitterson called Beef Bros, or Beef Brothers, beef I don't bros. know, which is the right <laughs> one. Well, you know, I say Beef Brothers, it's Beef Bros. Uh, I guess, you know, when you see Mario Brothers written out, you know, you say Mario Brothers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, it's kind of a little, you know, to do. But yeah, Beef Bros, actively on Kickstarter right now. We are, we've already hit our goal. So anybody who backs us at this point is just guaranteed to get the get the, the awesome book. We're definitely going to make it happen. Uh, it'll be a 32-page full-color comic written by Aubrey Citizen, drawn by me, and then colors by Kiko Osio, who did, um, he's the artist on No One Left to Fight, which is awesome. Such a good book. Who do, who puts I that highly recommend it. That's a Dark Horse book. Okay. It's uh, a cool name. I think I'll, like yeah, he has like two or three Dark Horse books. Um, but yeah, he um, he had out to me. Whoa! So we had gotten kind of hooked up via Twitter. A friend of ours, Grim. You've met Grim before, right? I've Dan? met him a few times. Yeah. So he had said, "Hey, it'd be cool if you two made a book together." So we just started emailing. And we were like, hey, what do you like? Hey, what do you like? And so we both were like talking about, you know, side scrolling beat em ups like Streets of Rage, oh, yeah. Final Fight. We were talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, pro wrestling. Because um, Aubrey, if anybody doesn't know, he's huge into pro wrestling. He used to have this wrestling podcast. And so, um, yeah, we were like talking about all that stuff and how cool it was. And we we're like, man, these, these games and, and movies and stuff were great, but they were kind of like, like the politics were kind of off in them, you know. Like it was always like Americans killing everybody that's evil, and yeah. it was always like, "Oh, these criminals! We got to kill all these criminals." Um, so we we're just thinking about like, what's a what's a kind of a superhero that we could do that's maybe more involved with their community and like tries to help people instead of just beating up people that are, you know, having a hard time or making mistakes. 
and uh, you know, we, we ended up with this beef bros concept where we got these two, I guess the term that people use is himbos, which is, I, I had never heard that before because I'm <laughs> old. <laughs> but yeah, himbos, these bodybuilder guys that kind of, uh, you know, live in this neighborhood and try to help people out, um, you know, uh, when things go up. So they fight against, you know, cops that are mean to them, you know, un unrealistically mean to them or, you know, mean to them without cause and, and they help, uh, you know, people that are getting evicted by terrible landlords and things like that. So, um, so yeah. That's awesome. Right. In Argentina, Mario Brothers was, was Mario Brothers, right? Ask Fico. <laughs> um, yeah, man, uh, Aranga, that, that, uh, Beef Bros promo that, that Aubrey did was amazing. Like he totally gets, uh, wrestling promos and like how they they function oh yeah i guess um, it's it funny kind of like a wrestling promotion isn't it right absolutely yeah so he's like he, he was you know doing that and as soon as he showed me the footage i was like oh my gosh dude this is bananas like people are gonna love this promo video and then we got the music from uh, kyle Schutt from the sword yeah dude uh, dude i was like no way man the sword rocks so that was a huge coup is he buddies is aubrey buddies with uh i I guess he knows Kyle, you know, I don't know. Aubrey's really into metal too. Yeah, he's a metal guy. Um yeah. Oh good. I'm glad I pronounced that right, Aranga. Uh Improvert. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Hey everybody. Tyrell's gonna shout out any questions you may have because I Yeah, let's know if you want to know about beef bros or Dan's uh, you know, silly drawings that he does. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> So Dan, tell me I have a question for you, man. Tell me about this uh this clothesline uh, drawing you've recycled six times. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrell, tell them about my tell them tell them about my recycled clothesline drawing. <laughs> well, okay, so I'm newly a full time comic artist. You know, I wasn't doing that before. I was doing it as a my side hustle. And one thing I've learned as I've started, and especially since talking to Dan, is that it's okay to kind of reuse things and figure them out and, and like you know so i was looking through one of dan's uh so dan did what was it it was i don't know if it was in the wrestling wrestletober first was that where you had that drawing first yes um yeah, i did like in uh, kota Ibushi getting clotheslined by jushin thunder liger in a, in a, a right, bad right. way yeah it's a it's an awesome drawing if you guys have that zine it, you, you know what i'm talking about and then he releases the thank you liger and i'm like wait a minute that's that clothesline drawing again, but with Liger doing it. <laughs> and then he releases Wonder Woman Earth, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's Wonder Woman doing this oh, yeah. same move. But it's such a cool drawing, man. Like, it, it works in, in every so I have to Now, I have to correct you, uh, though. Now, in the Thank You Liger drawing, yeah, yeah. it's a Shote palm strike. It's not actually a clothesline. Oh, so like, the palm is coming right is... at the camera. Because um, right, I right. learned foolishly, uh, I felt foolish. My ink tober, my wrestle tober drawing of Liger, clothesline. Liger never clotheslines people. He does the Shote strike. Oh, so I mean, okay. it's basically See, like I I mean, it is basically that. like a uh, uh, yeah. clothesline, but he just sticks his palm out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great, man. So I I love that, and I'm I'm stealing that. I might even just steal that drawing, but I'm stealing that steal technique. Steal away. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Drawing is speed. Yeah, Dan's fast. He's quick. Yes, Dan is drawing a Beef Bros. It looks like he's got uh, Huey going right now. Huey has the awesome uh, Kid and Play haircut. Kid and Play was another big touch point for me and Aubrey. What's Kid and Play? Um, oh, dude. So Kid and Play is a '90s movie duo. It's these two guys, and they kind of get into hijinks. And there's like a nerdy guy and like a cool guy, and all of them are like. Um, I think in one of them in there in high school, you, you, the movies are called uh, House Party. I don't know if you've seen those. They did a couple other ones, but there's the House Party movies. And um, when we were designing Huey, the one that Dan's drawing right now, we were talking about the big pompadour, and we were talking about um, Guile from Street Fighter, but also the Kid and Play guys was another big uh, touch point. Oh, hey there, John. Uh, yes, Xander Cannon as well. Uh, Xander's a cool guy. I met him at Rose City Comic Con. What's kid and play? Yeah, come on. This is, uh, Bruno says, "What's up, Daniel Warren Johnson?" 
but uh, but yeah, it, it's it's like it was a fun it was fun to design these guys because um, so, I did so the first pass. Dude. Right, <laughs> I did the first pass on them, and it was kind of like the one guy was in like a singlet, and the other guy kind of had like a shirt on, and Aubrey was kind of like, I don't know, man, this is too safe. Like <laughs> they need to be crazier, and I was like, okay. So I came back with the second or third iteration, and I had I added this, uh, you know, the armband and the watch on Huey, and I added the, the kind of fanny pack bandolier on Ajax, and then the the bicep bands that he has. Um, and I was just like, I wanted things that, on the one guy were really angular, and then on Ajax I liked this like the headband and the um, bicep bands sort of trailing behind him when he was in motion. Mm. Uh, I thought that was kind of it's kind of fun you, you know how it is when when you're designing characters dan i think you probably think about this is like not just how they look standing still but how you're going to make them move in the oh, things that's actually interesting because i never think about that <laughs> that's probably not good <laughs> i just well. try to make them look as cool as possible <laughs> and then i usually find logistical issues as i'm in the middle of the comic book like you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean the character design phase is like um one of my favorite parts of like making comics like making the, the people look cool giving them cool weapons and stuff and and um you know that's that's the funnest part i uh, ignacio the Bud spencer movies and terrence hill movies you know we didn't talk about those directly but now that you mentioned i mean I, i'm sure that aubrey's into those i like films you know by uh I like all that spaghetti western stuff and all that kind of stuff. It was so. guys, uh, guys watch guys and girls, people watching. It was Tyrell that uh, exposed me to a, a few amazing things, and one of those was the um, Wild Bunch. Remember, I hadn't seen it until. Oh yeah, I had you over to watch the Wild Bunch because I love the Wild Bunch. And uh, anytime somebody tells me they haven't seen something, it's usually Dan. I'm like, <laughs> what? We're watching this right now. So yeah, Wild Bunch is a huge like that's perfect kind of action movie. I think it's a good reference point for comics too because the shots are composed so well in it, um, and the way he uses editing is 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 really good. Um, let's see what other questions. Oh, Aranga, we have full time. Okay, so before I was doing comics full time, I was working at a uh, art school, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. I was an administrator there. So that's the school I went to, and then uh, I lived in Los Angeles for a while, did movie stuff, and hated it, and then I came back here to Chicago and worked at the school for almost 15 years. Um, and during that time, I was making comics, but I didn't quit to do full-time until about a year or two ago. Um, you know, it took a lot of coaxing, because I'm a play-it-safe kind of person, <laughs> but I really wanted to make it work, and you know, my wife and, and Dan, they, they, they all encouraged me to do it. And I'm really, really happy that I'm doing it now. So, uh, Dylan, yeah. Wild Bunch. That, that, my dad too. Loves that. Loves that movie. I mean, your dad though is like, your whole family is like a wet, like you, you guys, you love. Yeah. They're things. cowboy people. It's funny. Cause a lot of them like the more kind of John Wayne, western where it's like good guys and bad guys whereas the wild bunch has a lot of gray area Seriously. in it which i tend to like is like that or um um high plains drifter is another one i really love um Out, outlaw josie wales those are all really good all right so yeah sam I'm, i realize that this needs to be i'm trying to figure out where i'm gonna fit his tag team guy is oh uh, yeah huey beef and ajax Ajax is the Ajax blonde, B. Right? right, right. He's a little more wild, you know. He's he's a little less even tempered. Um, he tends to fly off the handle. You know, he always means well, but he's not. Neither one of them are like smart. You know, <laughs> they're like kind of big dumb guys that want to help people. Um, you know, a big one of the biggest touch points for us when we were making it is um, Bill and Ted. You know, we we just love this idea that these two guys who just mean well and want to rock end up saving the whole world you know i think that that's i don't know i think a lot of us could learn a lesson from not overthinking what being a good person is you know amen uh we have somebody asking about your tools there dan what do you got oh, going dude, just get old school 0.9 pentel 
a yellow, uh, just mechanical pencil. And inside, oh, if we really want to get uh, crazy here, we got the 09, uh, <laughs> 0.92B Neox Graphite Pencil Lead, which is fantastic. And uh, this is just some Strathmore 500 Bristol. So the, I actually have this whole stack of... Um, uh, this is like my leftovers from all the commissions that I did over the past few months because I, I cut into um, big sheets of paper. So they've been sitting around waiting for me to be to use them. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, that Stratmore 500, that is your fault that I have yep. to pay for that now because you know, once you start using it, there's no going back. But our buddy, our buddy Lance, uh, he, was, he, went, he talked to me about it because I was sweating about how much it was costing. And he's like... If you if you break down your cost per page of like what you're making per page, this actually is like totally worth it. <laughs> right, right. Well, especially with the number of pages that we draw doing comics. So, uh, let's see. Ignacio is saying I should art direct you. I I don't pretend to tell Dan what to do, but usually I just say add more veins <laughs> and then we're. <laughs> yeah, I guess and we're also, good. Um, I, I guess I didn't really. Did I introduce you well enough? I feel like maybe I didn't. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm Tyrell Cannon. I draw comics. Uh, I'm doing Beef Bros right now with, uh, well, I actually haven't started, you know, the rest of the issue yet, but I have a Kickstarter running for Beef Bros right now with Aubrey Sitterson. Before that, I just did my first issue of Eris, which is my sci-fi comic, which if you like big muscly dudes punching things, you'll probably like that. Um, and I'm actually working on the second issue of that right now, which will also pop up on Kickstarter early next year. Um, so definitely check those out. I've worked on a bunch of other things. You know, Dan was in a couple of my, uh, anthologies I That's put right. together, um, speculative relationships, which actually were some of Dan's first stuff in print. Uh, really proud of, of the work he did in there and did some really good stuff. Um, but yeah, let's see here. ED base or bass base, uh, is the 10 point spacer worth the dough? What do you think Tyrell? It is. I have one. And it is if you're going to do a lot of perspective, like say you're going to do a lot of interior spaces or exterior spaces in your comics, and if you don't have something like an iPad that you can use perspective grids in software. Um, so if you really want to go old school and do it all on paper, it's totally worth it. If you have Procreate and can build a grid in there, you probably won't use it very much. Um, they're too expensive. They're way too expensive for what they are. Before I had one, when Dan was using them, I and he was trying to tell me about them, I would just use a, a ruler to fake it. I would measure out, you know, every centimeter on one side of the page and then every, you know, two centimeters on the other side of the page and kind of get a similar effect. So it's slower, but there are workarounds for it. Um, let's see. Favorite comics growing up? Well, let's see. Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, I loved Jim Lee on Jim Lee's X-Men oh, stuff. Yeah, uh, X-Force of Bob Liefeld. Um you know, and all the early image stuff. I was all about Wildcats, the Max, Wetworks, Pit. I loved Pit. Um, a lot of that early 90s stuff was the the stuff that really got me going. I was a huge X-Men fan. Uh, uh, Peeb, thanks. Eris is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, because you, cause Tyrell, you ran a super successful Eris Kickstarter campaign. It did pretty well. We went twice the goal. And so that's why I was able to start the second issue a little quicker because um, I had been doing it in my spare time, the whole first issue. So it took me like a year to do the first issue. I think you remember, I was working on that forever, That's long true. ago. Uh, I do yeah. that. Um, let's see, do I work traditionally or digital? I do my thumbnails digitally, and then I do my uh, pencils and inks on paper, and then I do um, my colors in uh, the computer uh, when I color myself, uh, which is like Eris, I color myself. Beef Bros, I'm not coloring myself. Silent kid, Daniel, how's it going, dude? How's it going, Daniel? It's going okay. My kid is still awake, which is uh, not great, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, yeah, can you, you you can hear her running around the stairs, right? The new the new obsession <laughs> okay. the new obsession of the day is um, Minnie Mouse. So we're watching a lot of Minnie Mouse oh, cool. Clubhouse, which is uh, woof. It's rough, but. What can you do? <laughs> ED base. Uh, you thought I was I was black before you saw my pick. I have gotten that many times, pal. So 
No worries. I have a name that is confusing to people. It's funny, though, because my name is actually from a Western novel um, called The Sackets is where I got my name. Um, but it's a, it's funny. My my former boss at my old job is uh, is black, and he, he and I always had a fun time with that because people we shared an office people would come in the office and they'd come looking for me and start talking to him and be like i'm not tired <laughs> <at all." laughs> so uh what program do i use to color um i do uh procreate now I, I and then i kind of bring it back into photoshop and do some stuff i can't do in procreate in photoshop um and then on eris i would say about half the pages i had one of my former assistants um, flat them for me. And so she, I, I'm not sure what she used to flat them. I think she might have used Clip Studio, but I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of it in Procreate, and then I drag it back into Photoshop for some fine tuning on the colors. <laughs> Hello in Portugal. It's not inspired by the Tyrell Corporation. No, no. But I did get that a lot growing up. I love Blade Runner. Um, Oh, cool. You've read the Sackets. That's awesome. It's really a cool book series. Um, I've read them as well. Oh, we're getting a double spread now? Well, I just, kinda, I just couldn't figure out how I was going to fit these. this guy. That I was, I was, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, well, I'll just add more paper. Simple. <laughs> this is the Dan way of working. Just start and then, you know, see what happens. I'm trying to... So, Dan, what, uh, what, what are you... Um, you, you you watch more wrestling than I do. I used to watch wrestling as a kid a lot, so I'm more like I, the '80s stuff I know. But you watch mostly Japanese stuff now. Do you watch any American wrestling? Yeah, anymore? I watch um, AEW a lot. So that's an American promotion that started last year. Um, oh, cool. So, uh, but uh, the reason that I I started watching it is because m most of the biggest stars from. AEW started in Japan, and so I, I oh. found out about them that way. So oh, I, cool! They broke off to kind of to do their own promotion here in the states, like because in Japan you don't like here in America. It's all about the um, TV deals you can get. That's like how the WWE has made so much money over the years. Um, right. It's not like that in Japan. They they it's it's like a touring program, like old school. Right. Um, so they uh, this the owner of the Jacksonville Jack one of the the co-owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Tony Khan. Um, he saw how popular uh, like uh, some of these uh, stars were in Japan that okay. didn't have any sort of TV deal, and he's like, if we could get TV with these kinds of stars. Uh, uh, so that was and he's a huge wrestling fan like um, nice he, getting some inside baseball on wrestling with oh, Danny, well, guys. It's, this it's, is... I'm, you know <laughs> <laughs> oh Konami Code Dan says that they got their getter robo commission and they love it awesome oh I'm so glad thanks for getting it from me uh, that was a was cool really one. fun um I probably shouldn't ask Konami Code how long you waited for it. Is that? Uh, you know, I uh, it's yeah. <laughs> I'm just teasing. no, it, it's I. Dude, you really understand how hard Dan works for you. He's he's constantly drawing, constantly working. Um, he's he's working real hard all the time. So when he's not playing guitar, yeah, he's yeah, when, hard. and guitar is like ninety percent of my time. <laughs> Um, so so yeah, but I do oh, watch man, some. A... I do watch that, but I don't really watch any um, WWE. So. Nice. Yeah, I I used to. I mean, when I was watching wrestling, I remembered. I still think of it as WWF. You know, that's how old, like how long ago that's I was old, watching old it. I'm like, school. oh, WWF was so great because it was before they were even WWE. But yeah, man, like Rowdy Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, you know, the Ultimate Warrior. Those were my guys. You know, I loved, I loved that stuff. Do you remember stuff. when um, the, uh, Ultimate Warrior, like, died? Do you remember that? And yeah. And he, like, came yeah. back and everybody was like, is this the real Ultimate Warrior? <laughs> he had a lot of injuries, I think. Uh, I think you're um, right. I think he yeah. also had some trouble, like, with steroid use and stuff. I can't imagine. <laughs> 
I got some more comments here. Oh yeah, built beef bros looks hella fun. Thank you very much. Uh, bootlegging is a habit. My John Wick commission came in. Thanks for including the thumbnail. Oh, you're welcome. Um, oh yeah, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Yes, yes, those guys definitely, man. Has anybody here watched uh, Dark Side of the Ring, Tyrell? Have you watched Dark Side of the Ring? I have. What is that? So that's a, a TV show on Vice. That is like a, it's like a docu series. And they just kind of okay. like talk about all these crazy horror stories in wrestling, um, and it's really fascinating. Like they talk about Chris Benoit and that tragedy. They talk about um, oh right. They talk about uh, the uh, oh gosh, what's his name? The hardcore wrestler from ECW, um, who uh, he was so hardcore that he's like he's like done some absolutely crazy stuff that like you know probably would have got him kicked out uh new jack new jack his name's new jack and, okay. and he would do yeah. some crazy crazy stuff so um yep yeah. uh dino dino Brown. we got a luke versus vader commission guy here he said he got the, you got some great commission followers up in here in your chat oh yeah man. uh well because usually i do commissions on here so yeah, you know, I I want to like show them the pages that I'm working on right now, but I I'm obviously I can't I'm not allowed. Dude, isn't that like, the most frustrating thing with comics? Like you can't really show what you're working on a lot of the time. You know, that's like it bothers me because I'll draw like a cool panel, like when I was working on Beef Bros, because Aubrey was like, "Don't show it to anybody," you know, and I was like, "Oh, these drawings are so cool. I want to show them to people," but you gotta wait, and it's it's brutal, man. And then people think they're like, "What happened to Dan or Tyrell? How come they're not posting any art?" And you're like, "Man, I'm working so hard. I just can't. But you can't show." Yeah, it's. Uh, I promise, I am working on new comics. It's. Uh, it's not. I've seen some of the pages. They look really cool. You guys are in for a treat once this next project gets announced. Oh, we got. It looks like Garanga got the uh, Galactus fighter pilot. That's the one. Dude. Oh. That's the. That's the one. I think that's that the was one. Probably, that was one of my favorites. I did a, I did an Akira one that I'm really happy with. The Canada, like next to his bike. Oh right. Um, oh hey John, John Lay, Beef Bros, well worth the wait. Thank you, pal. Dude, John Lay, Giga artist, Giga looks incredible. Cannot wait to get my physical copy from the sh from the shop. What is it on like third third reprinting already? You guys are animals. What is this? I don't know what this is. Dude, John Lay, he's uh he was in the Nexus portfolio I did with Landis. Oh. Um he has a coming out called Giga, which is about these like uh mechs that have like um they're like shut down mechs that have like people living inside them and building their whole culture around these like defunct mechs. It's such such a cool That's book. That's awesome. I highly you guys check it out it's so badass like dan it's right up your alley dude oh, i gotta check that out all right yes john we got to jump on the the video chat again sometime buddy yes everyone did make out like gangbusters this year dan's done some really cool commissions Yeah, i'm, I'm doing my very best to like make them as cool as possible um, all right so this is looking good. I'm liking. I'm liking where you're going with the hair on uh, on Ajax there. I f well, so I, I made Ajax a little. It's like I made him a little too big relative to. Uh, let's see. Just make him in the foreground. Like put that guy he's swinging in front of Ajax's arm or something. But then it covers his. Uh, it covers his fist. Yeah, I know. You don't want to cover yeah. the fist. Let's see. I think I may just. I'm just making him bigger. <laughs> oh, we got a guy who got a, a gory Thea here. Oh, extremities. My favorite, my favorite uh, Dan book. So the funny story about the gory Thea, I put all that work into it, and I totally forgot that you know people are not specific with their requests at all, which I appreciate. <laughs> Uh, it's great it's but the there was uh one guy he's an awesome dude he uh just said you know i i uh do music lessons and i really want to hang up this commission that you do for me in my classroom like you know 
where I give music lessons. So if it's cool with you, can you just make it not gory? And I totally forgot <laughs> to make it not gory. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I usually, that's some, that's one of the few things I do try to ask people. I'm like, do you care if there's gore in this? Because I tend to draw that stuff. Um, let's see, we've got a couple more questions here. Aranga, uh, so me and Aubrey were connected by a mutual friend. Grim Wilkins had suggested we work together. So we just started emailing and exchanging ideas, and Beef Bros kind of grew out of that. Um, I think the original kind of concept of Beef Bros as, as a name and, and as these two guys was Aubrey. But the uh, the sort of feeling we went for was a was a kind of a mutual collaboration. Uh, John Lay, if you're still there, drop your info. And if not, he's uh, he's on uh, he's on Twitter. I don't know what his Twitter handle is. John Lay, probably, <laughs> uh, and Instagram. Oh yeah, Ignacio, it is totally amazing to, to be able to connect with people and connect with your friends on, on these these places. Um, you know, talking to each other and checking this out. Brad, Frederick, Eris 2, the thumbnails for the second issue are totally complete. And um, I don't know if you saw the last Kickstarter update, but my thumbnails, uh, me and Dan's friend Landis is always teasing me that my thumbnails are kind of more like pencils. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, you know, it's a little further along than some people's thumbnails. Like they're they're ready to roll into into pencils and inks. So um, that's actually the hardest part. So once I got those thumbnails done, I'm feeling like the rest seems to go a little quicker. It'll still be a while. It'll probably be early next year that I have the Kickstarter going. But it is um, going swimmingly. So the second issue of Eris is um, basically two giant fight scenes. So if you're into fight scenes and um, sci-fi. And guys with giant muscles punching people's heads off, you will probably want to check out the second issue. Um, I just actually sent Dan the thumbnails recently They're to check awesome. out. Awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. Konami Code was very stunned by their commission. Uh, dis P discovered Miranda by Grimm. Yes, Miranda is so cool. That's Grimm's like um, his opus, man. It's it's so good. Like he he what he's doing with sort of word balloons with images inside of them and stuff it is so rad and his color choices are amazing um we actually had Grimm in the third issue of my anthology speculative relationships and he did i think it was the third issue or was the second issue second issue of speculative relationships he did an awesome story in that one too with his kind of ink wash style which is really really cool both available on my website uh let's see who do you guys fanboy over to this day? Who do you fanboy over, Dan? Uh, anything James Heron draws, I still fanboy over. Uh, Frank, Frank oh, yeah. at least still. Yeah, Frank. Um, mm -hmm. man. Frank and Trad for me, like the current artists. Frank and Trad. And I guess I can say current artists with Barry Windsor Smith, too, because he has a new book coming out. Like those three... I never get tired of their work, and if I ever met them, actually, I have met Trad now that I think about it, but I just would be so awestruck, you know. Um, Trad was so nice oh, when Trad I met him; awesome. he was like the coolest. Thing. <clears throat> yeah, I had the pleasure of actually um, when we were at Heroes Con last year. I, his parents came to visit him at the show, and I got to hang out with Trad's parents. <laughs> and like, I totally understand now why he's such a nice guy because his parents were like so sweet. Yeah. He's unreal, man. I When I was working on Eris 2, I was looking at a lot of trad stuff. Um, I think people will see the influence there. Um, John dropped his Giga information in there. Check it out. Oh, it's from Vault. Yeah. Um, oh, Ian Bertram. Uh, Ink <clears throat> talking about Ian Bertram. Yeah, he's he's very good. He's very good. Uh, I was actually uh, thinking, Brad... so um, I wanted oh, to do, I wanted to get um, Ian Bertram. So I was going to buy a tele, just a Telecaster body and I, I wanted to have Ian oh. just go crazy on it and just drew what I, draw whatever well, he the, wants on it and make You have that giant piece by him don't you? I do. I have a huge golem piece. Yeah, Dan has this crazy Ian Bertram piece. It's like what? Like three feet tall or um, something? It's, it's crazy. Oh man. It's <clears throat> at least 20 inches wide. Uh and it's long, it's it's taller than it is wide, so it's uh. uh 
Brad, thank you for checking out Eris, and thank you for checking out that Inktober, man. That one was a hard one for me to do. That why was, was it, wait, why I did was an it Inktober. Hard for you, bro? Talk to me. Well, he's talking about the 2018 one I did, about my dad's oh, accident. Oh, my uh, dad. That one was very difficult. <laughs> Um, I you were talking Ignacio, I don't, yeah, Ignacio, I don't know what Trad's doing these days. Dan probably knows. It's probably a secret. I do know, but I am not. I'm unfortunately, I'm not allowed to say. I, and I know what James is doing too, but I can't say either. Um, hey, CJB. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Can't wait for Beef Bros. Me neither. Where do you guys store your originals, <laughs> John? I store my. Oh man. John. Oh man. I'm so embarrassed whenever I go to Dan's house and see his originals laying all over the floor. <laughs> or like, I remember I got a space mullet page from Dan one time, and he like opened a closet and it's just like paint. It was like a cartoon. There's like paper falling out of it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> Oh man, but I have uh, mine are just in portfolios. You have a few, uh, on and then the real yeah. old stuff is in boxes. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Oh man, oh, I remember that. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? I was so I was so like bat flabbergasted. Josh Verillo likes Ryan Stegman. Ryan's okay. He's kind of a jerk, <laughs> but I'm just kidding. Ryan's great. Uh, uh, apparent. Trad's doing a panel with Felix. Oh, cool. Um, they say you need to have Dan. They said you need to have James on your channel. Oh man, I think uh, James stays away from internet stuff, but that's a great idea. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, cool. So Trad's doing a CAF panel tomorrow. That's rad. I did not know that. I'm gonna have to check that out. What's the CAF panel? A uh, comic arts, whatever. It's a it's like a convention, right? Um, like something like, like that. CAF meaning like the um. Like the like the collector like the no it's uh well I don't know what that is honestly they'll tell us yeah, in the comments we here don't even know. uh CJB congrats on Beef Bros thank you man oh cool you worked with Taylor Taylor's awesome man his letters are amazing like I'm so used to like I come from the indie comics world so I'm so used to like doing everything myself like lettering a book myself printing it myself so to see like Vico's colors on my stuff and then to see Taylor's letters it's such a treat it's such a treat dude these pouches man fun. this pouch yeah. oh, this is like a like it's like they're like in tank tops well he's in like a singlet like a wrestle wrestlers yeah. oh comic art fans that's what they're talking about comic art fans I was thinking about conventions that's what CAF is comic art fans you know that site that has our art all over it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so much mystery. Is it different for indie comics than other ones with the secrecy? Uh, Beef Bros was a secret for, shoot, a long time. Because actually when we started talking, I was neck deep in Eris and another gig I had to do with a guy, um, not had to do, but got to do with a guy named Matt Lowry called Drones, which is on my website, and it was a lot of fun. So Aubrey had to wait. Um, and then after I finished the pages, we had to wait a long time while we were trying to find a colorist, and then we had to wait a long time before the Kickstarter, so... It was a secret for a while. Indie comics people tend to be a little more open about what they're working on, but because um, we don't have NDAs and stuff that we've signed. But um, but yeah, yes, Trad did an awesome Spider-Man story. That was very cool. You should um you should tell you should tell our uh, our watchers how we met, man. Yes, so I'll do one more story, and then I got to dip out for bedtime for my new baby. But um. I, uh, me and Dan, let's see, we met at Wizard World Chicago. So if you guys have never been to Wizard World, um, don't go. It's the <laughs> it's worst show good. ever. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that on your channel, but it's kind of gone downhill. But uh, there was one year I went because I'm friends with this guy, Mike Manamivable, who's an illustrator. He's incredible. Uh, he did some stuff uh, for our anthologies as well. Um, and Mike always stays with me when he's in town. So he was staying with me. He was doing Wizard World. I went to visit him at the show. And I'm walking around the show, and I was like, man, there's nothing good here. <laughs> you know, like, this is awful. And I was like, Mike, is there anybody here that's any good? And he's like, well, there's this guy over there. He's, like, doing zombie portraits, but he has this comic called Mullets, Space Mullet or something. You should go check him out. And so I went over, and Dan's, like, sitting there, his hat, hat down over his face, and he's, like, got 
a couple postcards for Space Mullet and like and I'm like okay so I pick up the card and I'm like this looks pretty rad it's like kind of like a Simon Roy feel to it um <clears throat> and so we started talking and I read his comic he had had I think one or two pages went up and I was like this stuff looks really cool like this guy's really good so I think I don't know if I emailed you and then we just we found out we lived like within five ten minutes of each other so we went out to have coffee at the grind yeah. which now something else um but we went to the grind and just talked for like a couple hours Great. and it was funny because it was one of those situations where we were we were in like a tiny little coffee shop but we were getting in all these discussions about like religion and comics and getting all worked up and like i just knew everyone was staring at us and like like looking in on our conversation this was a little bit before like uh, comics were cool yet it's like like middle right middle of 2012 <laughs> yeah 2012 yeah so and then after that we just kind of started hanging out i thought we got along well and you know dan's been one of my best friends here in chicago he's a good person and that's the important thing it, it's great that he draws well but uh dan and rachel his wife are, are just two of the, the most wonderful people here in the city so thanks bro um yeah uh, one more question and then I got to dip out. So Josh Marullo, uh, Tyrell, do you think you'd ever do anything for the big two? I am 100% open to it. Um, I'm not against the big two. I just have not gotten any offers yet. I would wager if, if they see the second issue of Eris, I think I would be a pretty good fit for a team book. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to work on any kind of comic anywhere. I think comics are great and different kinds of stories are really great. So... Oh, and thanks for checking out that Appleseed commission. That was actually for Dan. So. Oh, that was awesome. Um, but, what a great yeah. commission. All right. Uh, I'm going to dip out, Dan. Do you need me to do anything before uh, I jump no, out? I don't think so. I think you can just leave. I think okay. your screen will just go black. Okay. Well, everybody, uh, please check out Beef Bros. It is on Kickstarter right now. I think we have 14 days left. I highly recommend you check it out. Dan, I am stoked to see this finished, man. When you get oh, it done, let me know. I don't know if I'm going to finish inking it tonight, but I'm going to try. That's okay. All right, thanks for the questions, everybody. Have see a great you, night. Tyrell. All right. So, oh, it looks like his screen just it stays there, so he'll be like our ghost watcher for the rest of the time, because I... I have to leave my drawing desk if I want to edit any of the stream, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Guys, give me two seconds. I'm going to say goodnight to my kid, and I'll be right back. Um, just give me uh, one sec. Sorry, it's very hard for me to break away here. Let's see. Be right back. All right, I am back. Okay. Man, I can't. That's not. That's no good. We're gonna have to wipe that. Wipe out that.
So if you guys are ever wondering why you can hear my kid so crisply, it's because that she is, she sleeps. Her bedroom is literally right next to my studio space, which is d uh, downstairs. So that is why it's uh, very toddlery. Thanks, John Lee. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it doesn't always work, as in with Ajax's. I love that name, Ajax. With his face, I totally destroyed it. If uh, Fiona, she's two and three quarters. I wonder if she's gonna think that I'm like a cool artist, or she's. I'm probably just gonna be like, "Oh, Dad, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends." Well, I guess we'll see. John Lee, can you um, if you send me a, an email, send me an email. Daniel Warren Johnson at gmail.com. Send me send me all the your in your links and then I'll put them in the description later. Um, because a lot of people watch these not live. And I, I, I you know I. I know a lot of people don't look at the comments when they wa when they do watch the replay. So <laughs> ED, oh boy. I know it's going to happen. I'm just not ready. some of this hair here. Drawing these guys' butts is um really fun. So <laughs> So this is really bothering me, this face here. I know I've said this before on the streams, but if something's really bugging me, I usually take my time, I usually take the time to get rid of it early because otherwise it just really starts affecting the way that I approach the rest of the image. So that's not necessarily any sort of advice. It's just what I know I need to be successful because 
I just, it's got to go. It's got to go. If it's not working, it's taking away from my experience. And I do want to have fun while drawing this, so. She never complains about the dark when I put her to bed. <laughs> Whatever. You don't have to whisper. The mic's pretty hot, so they can hear everything. Can you like how much longer is this gonna be? Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this, so probably like like a half hour. I just go hardball. I think I'm being I just like I turn into a robot. Dude, if she doesn't it's if, done so efficiently. If she doesn't if she doesn't do it, I just like pick her up like an action figure and move her around until she it's goes to bed. Because like normally I would say I'm more efficient in my things and things <laughs> done. But you just beat me every time with the bedtime is just something else. <laughs> the heart wants what it wants. <laughs> I want to hang out and do my own thing. It's time for you to go to bed. Dom, I have watched uh, the first two, but I think, unless I'm mistaken, there's going to be, uh, there's one on today, right? I loved the first two. 
I thought they were so fun. It's been something to look forward to in the midst of a lot of bad news. Or, you know, a lot of COVID news. That's so exciting. Chaos and Comics. No announcement yet. Coming soon, though. Hang on. It's coming, I promise. Dylan, uh, Tyrell had to put his kiddo to bed. So that's why he is not here anymore. Um, it wasn't really like an official interview or anything. He was just kind of hanging out with us. Ten point space was going for a bill on Amazon. So if it's only a hundred bucks, uh, I would jump on it because I bought mine for like a hundred thirty or something. I think the reason that they're so expensive is like there's only one company that makes them, and I'm pretty sure they're like unionized or something. Because it's a uh, it's used for not it's like a nautical instrument. So I think they can get away with it being that much because uh, they have to be exact for um, to like plot courses on like ships this is my guess I know it's a nautical tool
All right, Ignacio, I will show you if I can find it. Where's my Oh, watch me not be able to find my stupid spider now. Okay, here it is. This is a 10 point divider. 10 points on it. Alright, so I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now I'll take that, I'll move it over here. Make it smaller. One, two. It's actually 11 points on this one, but. And then I can just connect the dots and it will make a, oh, it'll make a perfect, oh my gosh. It'll make a perfect perspective grid for me. Make sense? Try it. Try typing in ten point divider. I don't know what else it would be called. That's what I looked up. Sorry, I just have to get in here really fast to get this face right. I don't usually get that close when I draw, but when I do faces that from the side like this, I really need to get up close. You know, it's funny. I feel like there be a, there must, there's got to be like a cheap way to make it, like specifically for artists. I should probably kickstart that. I wonder if it's copyrighted. These legs are a little weird, but um, I don't care.
John, I um I I I penciled it, but very lightly. But the nice thing about the Pro White that I use, the whiteout that I use, is that I can pencil it and erase it once it dries, and it'll be totally fine. I don't need to worry about the whiteout smudging. So with that, I actually have to go. I'm going to finish this up in a little bit. Um, guys, please go. I'm going to have a link after the fact, but please just Google Beef Bros. Please uh, give Tyrell some love, Tyrell and Aubrey. Um, if I know anything, it's that I don't know Aubrey super well. I think he's a great dude. But I know, I've know i known Tyrell since 2012, and he is an amazing person. His work ethic is like no other. And um, I just, uh, I really believe in the project. I believe in him as an artist and as a person, and I vouch for him completely. I highly suggest you go and you check out their Kickstarter. Get on this hype train while you still can. Um, I hope that people enjoyed having like a guest kind of helps me draw a little bit more and, you know, so it helps somebody to help field the questions. Um, and it was really fun for me and I'm definitely planning on doing it again. So, uh, let me know if there's some people that you think might be a good fit to kind of come and visit and hang out and, uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, that's the Luther. That's the best comment I can get. I'm so glad it was fun, and uh, we'll talk to y'all soon. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.